The peace of the Lord be with you. And, uh, and good morning and welcome to everyone. Uh, as always, we've got a couple of announcements before we begin this morning. So I'll start with those. Um, today is, just a reminder, today is the last day to sign up for the, the chili cook-off. It'll be Saturday, uh, November 18th. Uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of people signed up already, so it's going to be great. It, it will, uh, it's, it's great to see that we've got, uh, got so many people coming, so we'll look forward to that. And again, like I said, please feel free to, to sign up if you haven't already. That way we can get a good, a good count. Um, elders, we have a, an elders meeting tomorrow night at 7, so please plan to join us for that. Then um, next Sunday there will be a, a script collection, so if you, uh, if, you have, if you order script, please make sure to bring that next Sunday. Uh, and also next Sunday, the, the youth will be having a youth activity event. I'll send an email, but we'll be planning to go to, to Putt Shack at Oak Brook. Uh, we've got it scheduled between 3 and 6, so um, look out for details for, for the, the kids for that. Um, then just a reminder, we have our, our, our regular November voters meeting where we start the budget process. That'll be November 19th, so join us for that as well. And then uh, that... Um, uh, that Sunday, we're also going to do our, our narrative service, you know, where we explain the, the, the liturgy. So um, it's always a, a good Sunday to bring people in and explain why, why we do what we do. So, um, so join us for that. Then that Wednesday after that will be our Thanksgiving Eve service. So we'll have that uh, Wednesday, November 22nd at 7 p.m. And, and like we did last year, we'll be doing that in, in partnership with Redeemer and Elmhurst. And uh, actually, Pastor Alphen is going to preach for that service. So, so anyway, join us for that as well. And then uh, for the announcements, the... Uh, Donations for Breakthrough Ministries has begun, uh, have begun today, and they'll run through the month of November. So please take a look at that. The collection box is in the parish hall. And, uh, and thank you also to all those who have already started donating. Um, as far as other things, as always, I point you to the communion statement in the front of the, of the bulletin. Uh, due to the unfortunate differences between Christians, we do practice close communion. Uh, if you are uh, someone who, who is not a member in good standing of a congregation of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, but would like to come forward for a blessing, we'd love to include you in that way. Just please cross your arms, and that way we can include you in that blessing. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 677, For All the Saints. Hick, se uh, Hick 77. Hymn 677. Um, we'll sing stanzas 1, 4, 7, and 8, and that's a reminder that today we are, we are observing the Feast of All Saints. So uh, we, we begin with that hymn. And we will sing that after the pealing of the bells.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in His Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing, making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the ju judgment written. This is honor for all His godly ones. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, unit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from the Revelation to St. John, the seventh chapter. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and where, from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from the first letter of John, the third chapter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our Lord's words in the Holy Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. 
Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they per persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn 644, The Church is One Foundation. M644.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we observe the Feast of All Saints today, we, of course, as the kind of core of that feast, remember those who have gone before us in the faith, right? Those who are with the Lord now, those who are the, the, that have lived that, that faith into the, to the life's end. And, of course, that's, that's important, right? As we, as we remember them, we give thanks for, for their example. We give thanks for their faithfulness, for their lives in Christ. How blessed we are, Christians, to have this communion of saints, the communion of all of those who who have won the victory and stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus and who have stood in His presence even since the days in which He was on earth Himself. But as I use that phrase, communion of saints, as I say it that way, Hopefully you think of the creed that we just confessed, or the the Apostles' Creed. Think about that. I I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, right? All of that being about this Holy Spirit who, who comes to us, who makes us holy, who makes us holy ones, saints. Luther himself said that when we speak of the communion of saints, we're speaking of nothing more than the Christian church. Because the communion of saints is the body of believers gathered around the Lord Himself who who makes them holy, who makes them saints. It's the church, right? But as I was reflecting on preaching on this this week, I couldn't help but uh, think of an experience recently had by my my best friend from home. He went to, to Cuba with a group of people from his congregation. Now, it was something that was organized through the, the local churches there, which was kind of interesting. I didn't realize that, that Christianity would have local churches that much in, in a place like Cuba, but, uh, but it was permitted there, and, and, and they, they were able to go. But the reason that they went, well, a part of the reason they went was to install water filters in people's homes. Apparently, the water in Cuba isn't necessarily all that drinkable. Right? So they, they went to, to help the people in, in the town there so that they would, have, uh, they would be able to, to not just live, but, but even thrive with that water. And of course, that was something that was striking with reflecting upon the church, because that's the church doing something the church should be doing. Caring for people. Caring for even the most basic needs of people. That's good to hear. But what was more impressive about their, their trip there was the story that he told of one of the ladies that they met as they were installing the filter in her home. Now, her name was Niave. I think I'm saying that correctly. But as they went into Niave's apartment, immediately it became apparent that she practices or practiced what's called Santeria. Now, if you're not familiar with Santeria, Santeria is... A religion kind of like voodoo, although I don't think it has the dolls and the like that we think of with voodoo. Uh, but, but it's similar in the sense that it's a mix between Roman Catholicism and, and what you call spiritism. Right? Now, now, Santeria in particular came about in Cuba, and so it's a mix of Roman Catholicism and an African form of spiritism called Yoruba. And, uh, but what that means is that, that they have images often of the saints who are present in the form of, of something akin to an altar in their house, and then the adherent of that religion gives offerings to those images as, as homages to, to gods, right? To the spirits or, or whatnot represented by those images. Well, as my friend and his group began to, to talk to Niave there, she brought up questions about God with them. And, and she began to make it clear that she was fed up with the, the gods that she had been giving these offerings to. and In a sense, you could say somehow they weren't working. They had failed. And so through the translator, my friend and his group began to tell Niave about Christ. And in that conversation, the Holy Spirit brought Niave to faith in Jesus. Now, what's the point of that story? Well, on the one hand, it's the encouragement of the example of the church doing things the church should do and seeing fruit from that. There's the the, the encouragement of the the church caring for her neighbor, as we ought. There's the 
Encouragement of the, the confession of the gospel and the, and the work of the Spirit through that confession to, to bring someone else into that communion of saints. And that's awesome. And that's worthwhile for us to reflect on. But what really struck me about the story was the reception of the gospel itself by Niave and the circumstances surrounding her. Think about how the gospel is often received here in America. How is it heard? Well, it's not uncommon that it's received with disdain or extreme disinterest, right? Often people perceive that they don't need God to help them, or, or, or maybe specifically, maybe they, they, they believe that God, they need God's help, but not specifically so much in needing the forgiveness that Christ himself provides. You know, as they, they hear that, sadly, they often hear it as being too exclusive or, or too judgmental or, or too critical of, of, of people and sin and the like, and, and so they don't, they don't receive it well. But as we think about it that way, think about the circumstances that we have in our country. Where are our needs provided? We've got it pretty easy, right? We have these bank accounts that have numbers that we look at, and, and those numbers appear and, and increase as, as we, we put uh, deposit checks or, or have it even easier and have direct deposit, and then the, the numbers go up, right? And then, and then we take a, a card that, that moves that money to the, to the grocery store, and we, and we uh, have an abundance of options in the grocery store. And as I say that, I, I, I mean options because, let's be realistic, how many of them are actually needs but we put those options in our cart and we, we scan them and, and we scan those cards and, and then that's how we go on until the next time we're, we're low on those options in our houses. You know, there's often very little hand-to-mouth about it. It's secure, it's, it's simple, it's worry-free, right? Now, and, and obviously, as I say that, uh, to be sure, that's not universally true in our country. There are, there are many people who have what we call you know, food insecurity and the like, but but relative to a place like Cuba, right? Now, I haven't been in particular to Cuba, I have to admit, but, uh, but I did go to Haiti, and I remember the stores in Haiti. They're haunting, comparative to here. Now, if you, any of you were, were haunted in those first days of COVID when you went to the, the paper aisle in Costco, I remember being struck by that and looking, you know, it's usually in abundance, and there was no water, no, no, no paper, no toilet paper, no, no paper towel, and all of that, right? It was haunting. But if that was haunting, you have no idea how haunting these stores are. Five boxes of mac and cheese, 15 bags of rice, 20 cans of soup for the whole store. And of course, that's not actual numbers, but, but you get the idea, right? And while that's Haiti, Cuba also suffers a great deal of need, perhaps, perhaps not as dire, but still certainly significant. And so when Niave hears the gospel there, she hears of the God who promises never to fail in contrast to these idols who's offering, who she's been offering to. And she hears that truth in recognition of her great need. In other words, she hears that what she heard, she heard that she had great, excuse me, in other words, what she heard, she heard with a poverty of spirit and hungering and thirsting, not only for food, but clearly for righteousness itself. And I can say this because I, while my friend's church isn't Lutheran, I know him well enough to know that when they told her about Jesus, they didn't tell her that if she believed magically she'd have dinner on the table that night. That's not what his church teaches either. I know that the gospel was spoken with the eternal promises of the kingdom of heaven, with the eternal comfort of the lamb on the throne, the satisfaction in that blood of Christ. And so Christians, what a beautiful gospel we have here, right? And as I ask how it's received among us, of course, on the one hand, I, I said here in America, right? So I mean in America in general. And I mean in the church here in America even. 
And after all, how many Christians do you know who cling to the faith because they expect that when they go to the store, the, the shelves will remain full and their bellies along with them? And by that I mean, how many do you think would fall away if those shelves became truly empty and they experienced true bodily hunger? Maybe to say it a different way, let's note how the needs in Cuba have stripped away the disinterest that's so common here and how that created the hunger and thirst for righteousness for Niave. How many here lack interest this gospel deserves because we all have things that we find more interesting? The bears and the colts, the news, the activities, the entertainments that we find to occupy our time. And if you notice, I switched to we because I don't mean just out there, but I mean in here, too. Because to be honest, that's true in our own hearts, isn't it? We constantly build up our own idols and our own altars in our hearts. Yes, not in the name of Santeria, but in all kinds of other falsehoods. We worship those things instead of the, the true God who has loved us and redeemed us in Christ, don't we? And what underlies that reality? Why is that the case? Well, of course, we can say, well, it's, it's always sin, right? But I think in this case, there's an, an additional attachment to, to the things of this world that, that connects to an expectation that we will have the, the comforts and the joys of heaven now. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we get caught up in the things of the now because we expect and hope that this is where it all lies. Now, we might deny that in our words. Hopefully, we deny it by the, the confession of our faith and all the more the confession of our sins. But the reality is, in our, in our own sick, sin-sick hearts, we are still drawn back to that immediate hope rather than the eternal one, aren't we? But look again at those Beatitudes that we heard in the Gospel lesson, in the words of Jesus. Look at the ones I, I, I subtly reference. But blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Do you hear it there? Blessed now are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven eternally. Blessed are those who mourn now, for they will be comforted in the future, parentheses, eternally. Blessed are those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth once more, eternally. And so on, right? And so it is. There is this sorrow and there's this hardship now. Why? Again, well, easily, because of sin, right? That's the, the consequence of sin is that we experience that suffering and that sorrow. Not, of course, I don't mean specific sins necessarily, but sin in general, our rebellion against God. But then the consequence of that sin that God uses to help us is that He then uses it to help us be stripped of all other hope now that we would be directed to that eternal hope in Christ. That's what those blessings in those Beatitudes tell us. Especially those blessings that talk about persecution, right? Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and speak evil on account of my name. It's what John told us in his letter, in that, that second reading in the Epistle lesson. Hear that again. Beloved, we are God's children now. And you know, what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see Him as He is. We are already God's children now, but then we will be seen as such because we shall be like Him at His return. It's now, it's not yet. And that not yet is eternal. Our faith is eternal. And it's true. 
And it's in the redemption in Christ. And here again, the, the beauty of that hope of the eternal. Here again, how much better it is than, than all the things we hope for now. Listen to the, the picture of heaven that we have in Revelation, because you know that's what, what we see there. We see this, this revelation where John was, was carried in, into giving a, a vision of heaven and the Lord there. Listen to what he says in chapter 7 again. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, and of course the Lamb being Jesus, right? Clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, palm branches being a symbol of victory. Palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And there you see it, right? This clothing in white robes, that's why we have white for All Saints Day all the more. The cleansing of our sin by the blood of Christ and the blood of that Lamb that we see there. Right, that's, that's Him, his, his holiness, taking upon itself your unholiness, purifying you from it as He was baptized with sinners, named with sinners in the Jordan River, carrying that sin to the cross, dying for it and being raised again for forgiveness. That you would be washed in that forgiveness in your baptism. That clothing of holiness Saints, that clothing that clothes you with the eternal joy of his purity. And listen to what that hope finally means then for you. And those words again from Revelation 7. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Christians, that's the joy. That's the hope. That's what the church is. She is the people of God, the communion of saints gathered around the throne of God himself and the Lamb, the Son, Jesus sheltered eternally, forever, in the presence of the Holy One who gives, him his holy, who gives them His holiness. And why? Because He loves them. Because He wants to shepherd them and care for them. Because He wants even to wipe away every tear from their eyes. From your eyes, Christians. He wants to care for you forever and ever as his holy saint. Amen. And now may the peace of that care guard your hearts and your minds in faith in God and the Lamb unto that everlasting life in his kingdom. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. O oh Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things into your keeping. Deliver us in your righteousness from all that would harm the body or assault the soul. 
Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, send your spirit to the ministers of the church who bring the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that they may work through the preaching of this gospel to gather the lost, kindle faith in those who do not yet believe, and sustain us all to the day of the Christ's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Gentle Lord, visit the homes of your people, that they may be places where faith is nurtured and where we learn to live our new lives in holiness and righteousness. Bless those who celebrate your gifts in our homes, especially Liz Freiberger, Lisa Malarkey, Paul Sulak, Ryan Enright, Doris Feck, Don and Gail Steele, and Chris and Sarah Arada, as well as all of those celebrating your gifts of birthdays, anniversaries, and other joyous occasions. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are the persecuted who suffer for your sake and whose witness calls all to faithfulness. Bring peace to the nations. Make our leaders wise, just, and honorable. And deliver us from terror, violence, and oppression. Bring your peace to Israel and the people there. Comfort those especially who have been harmed by the atrocities committed by Hamas. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, Comfort us by your abiding presence and satisfy all who call on you in need. Be with the hungry and homeless, the sick and sorrowing, the unemployed and underemployed, and the lonely and mourning. Be also with all those listed in our bulletin, Leslie, Therese, Walt, Jim, Bob, CJ, Joe, Mary Beth, Anne, Nancy and Kent, Jerry, Barbara, Blake, John, Sarah, Richard, John, Christine, Ken, Cassie, Emily, Joanne, Doris, the Cooey family, Chris, Steve, Eleanor Kulagan family, Allison, Rose, and Rachel, John, Bruce, Rod, Ellen, Lisa, Tom, Kathy, Benjamin, Frank, Dorothy, Rachel, Levi, Jamie, Leah, Jurgen, Caitlin, Bill, Karen, Kurt, Rose, Adam, Kimmy, Sharon, Don and Gail, Judy and Kurt, Vanessa, Noah, Athey, Ryan and Janelle, Amelia, Jim and Pat, Nancy, Carly and her unborn child, and uh, grant them patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, release them from their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, be with your church and all her members who belong to you by baptism and faith. At the bidding of the Lamb, our shepherd, give us ears to hear your word and faith to receive him in his blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be brought to everlasting life with the faithful who have gone before us and now rest from their labors. On this day, we remember and give thanks for all of those who you have called to their eternal rest in you, especially from our congregation, Carla Bergenthal. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, we give you thanks that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us royal priest, a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Though we are unworthy of your saving grace, we pray, to, we pray you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom all honor and glory is yours, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks, uh, and give thanks, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, by your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now this is the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul in the one true saving faith, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We continue with the post-communion hymn, O Lord, We Praise Thee, the first verse found on page 13 of the bulletin. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn, hymn 676, Behold a host arrayed in white, hymn 676.